In my last video, I talked about the relationship between a class and an object, and I showed you how to code up a very simple class with some simple properties and a method. You'll remember then, a class is a template for creating multiple objects of the same type. An object is an instance of a class. Last time, all of my code was inside a Windows Forms application. I wrote my custom class underneath the form class. This time, I'm going to show you how to write code for a class inside a class library. OK, so I'm going to start a new project, Visual Basic. But this time, I'm going to choose a project type of class library. Now, it's very important that you give things meaningful names. This is for my Cattery application. So I'm going to call the project Cattery. When I compile this, the DLL file will be called Cattery.dll. That's exactly what I want. I'm also being very mindful of where it's being saved. It's important that you know where things are going. That's exactly where I want it to go. I could change that, of course. So, it's creating a project, and the first thing you'll notice once the project has been created is we don't have a form. If I take a look inside the Solution Explorer, I've got a class1.vb file within the solution, but there's no user interface for this. A class library contains code that can be used by another program, but you can't launch it on its own. And you can see here I've got a class for free, so I'm just going to change that and I'm going to just write my class cat again very, very quickly. Public variables for properties and a public procedure for a method. I'm spelling breed properly this time. And I'll just chuck in a couple of extra properties while I'm at it. Things that a cattery might want to know. For example, whether the cat's had its vaccinations or not. Now, there's lots of things to know about a cat, but my cattery is only interested in certain things. This actually defines the term abstraction. I'll be able to create a cat object from this cat class, but it won't be a real cat. It'll be a simplified cat. Abstraction means to simplify reality. And abstraction is one of the fundamental principles of object-oriented programming. OK, let's put a method in here. Actually, let's keep this in cat language. OK, so there's my cat class. Pretty much the same as I had last time. Now, I want to make this available for use by a Windows Forms application. So now I'm going to compile the code. And I do this using the build menu. Build build solution. One build succeeded, zero failed. Now before I go any further, I want you to appreciate where this has been built. I'm just going to take a look in the folder where my solution has been stored. So here's the folder where I saved everything. There's my Cattery folder, there's the Cattery solution file. If we just take a quick look inside the Cattery folder, We've got all the project files. There's class 1 VB, which is actually the ultimate container for my code. Here, there's a bin folder. That stands for binary. We've got a debug folder inside there. And here we have cattery.dll. If I was selling this, that would be the piece that I sell, the dynamic link library. So I've made a note of the path. Obviously, I could move that file to somewhere else if I wanted to. So let's create a new application to use it. Back to Visual Studio. I'm going to save everything here, and I'm going to close the project. I don't actually have to, but just to prove a point, I will close the project down and start a new one. This time, a Windows Forms application, and I need to give this a meaningful name. Cattery App. Again, making sure I know where I'm saving it, when I build a Windows Forms application, this will result in a .exe file, an executable. 
This time I do have a user interface. Let's put a button on it. And I want to do something with that DLL. Project. Add reference. And I want to browse for the DLL file that I've just built. That's looking in a previous location. Let's just go back to my desktop. There's Cattery. And there's the DLL file. OK, so by adding a reference to Cattery.dll, I now have a link from my Windows Forms application to the class library. Let's create a new cat. Now I'm not seeing cat in the list, but I am seeing Cattery, which remember was the name of the class library. So I'm going to select that and then a dot and then I can see the class within that class library. I could actually have lots of classes in there. At the moment I've only got one. So I select cat and I now have a new cat. C1 dot and you can see I can start setting the properties just like I did before and I can call the method just like I did before. And a quick check to make sure that works. Looking good. Now, creating a new object of type cat has taken a little bit more typing here. I've had to qualify the name of the class with the name of the class library. I can save myself a little bit of work if I need to create more than one cat by using an imports statement at the top here. Imports Cattery. So from now on, whenever I want to declare a new variable of type cat, I don't need to precede that with the word Cattery. It's assumed because I've imported it at the top. Let's have another cat. So, there's my cat class again inside a class library. The concept of a DLL file, a class library, isn't going to be totally new to you if you've ever looked inside the folders where applications are installed on your own computer. Have a look around and you'll see that most applications consist of a few executables and dozens, if not hundreds, of DLL files. Be careful not to delete any of them. There are lots of benefits to this approach. The first is code reuse. Different programs within an application can all share and reuse the functionality of a class. Another benefit is that we can upgrade parts of an application easily without having to replace all of it. All we need to do is swap a few DLL files. There are, of course, some limitations to this. You can completely rewrite the code inside a method, swap out the library file, and everything will be fine as long as you don't change the name of the method or any parameters that it expects. In other words, as long as you don't change the public interface of the class. Another benefit of using class libraries is that we can make distributed applications. It's possible to have an application in which not all of the files reside on the same computer. If an application is running on a network, for example, some of the libraries can be located on a central server. A few executables can reside locally on the user's PC with links across the network to the libraries. This, again, provides opportunities for code reuse and easy maintenance. It also means you can put the programs that work particularly hard on more powerful computers. I'll say more about distributed applications another time. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to write property procedures so we can validate property values while they're being assigned.